all, all Kyo heroes, definitely one of the talented His Meepo. players. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Yeah, not a long time. He used to play it quite a bit. Um, uh, I don't know, I was like, maybe around when you guys were in Korea? I don't remember him ever playing Meepo, honestly. Because okay. he joined MVP maybe, around season two. I think so. it was even before you guys went to Korea where he was playing Meepo. I think okay. that's what it was. It was, like, it was like really early MVP team. Uh, he was on 5 and Q originally. He wasn't on MVP okay. until like okay. season two of KDL. So. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I don't honestly, when I was there at least, yeah. he never played Meepo, but you know, once he joined MVP, it was very different drafting. So, mm -hmm. Chen pick for Rave, so... Puts Earthshaker in the off lane. Interesting. Nothing choice. weird there. Ryor has been playing amazing Earthshaker yeah. all tournament. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. definitely one of the highest individually talented players in this game. Uh, there's a lot of really good players in this game, actually. Um, this is the best of the best that Korea has to offer, essentially. Um, but with the Chen and Disruptor, they can do some early things. I like the Chen Bristleback synergy. That's pretty cool. It's like a way to give heals that need in a Wisp. Yeah. If you do have those two heals, and that could be the difference between them getting kills. Uh, Witch Doctor IO both very low armor, so Bristle's very good at diving them. They have weak disables, so Bristle is definitely going to be a nuisance here, especially with Disruptor yeah. punishing Phoenix, positioning. Phoenix don't have good heroes versus the Bristleback. They also don't really have a clear Wisp partner, and I'm wondering what they try and round their draft off with. I feel like they do need something that can to some extent with the Wisp. TA Wisp isn't terrible here, I feel, because yeah. the, the burst damage of Rave is a bit weak due to the Earthshaker off, there's, off lane. There's still a Gyrocopter in the pool, too, but they're, they're going to go for yeah. a Sven. They had really just... Like, their team fight with just Darkseer, there's no follow-up to Darkseer. I mean, obviously, the Darkseer plus Sven is kind of a combo that you can look towards, but isn't going to yeah. actually hit as often as you'd like, but... It just there was there, there was no follow up stun. You vacuum right. into what a, a witch doctor cast, but you can still spread out after that. So I think right. it seemed like a hero they really needed. Yeah, I'm excited to see this Finn. Um, I, it's a hero that I've wanted to see a lot, um, but I've not seen it succeed at a really consistent rate. Yeah. I think it's I think this is probably the game for it, and I think he's a wake makes for a very good wisp partner. Mm -hmm. um, but. We'll, we'll see how it goes here. I think the Warcry is going to be good against the Bristleback, though. Yes, very good against Bristle because they do have low armor heroes. And it's a hero that Phoenix has picked a couple times in the last year. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a situational hero they do pair with Wisp, so I don't think it's out of their comfort zone either. So I think they're pretty happy that they got it. So now we've seen both of the drafts. Which team are we expecting to uh, to make it through? Because it's, it's only a best of is do it or die. And it's a very important day. Yeah. Like being in the winner bracket versus the low bracket makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Not only do you get the extra chance that you have another life by starting in the winner's bracket versus the loser's bracket, you're also one series away from making it to TI. Yeah. So. I think Rave have their comfort draft. MVP have something maybe slightly a bit different, less mm. a bit unorthodox. Yeah. But I don't think they've been out drafted. I think it's very even draft wise. The Sven last pick just yeah. fit in nicely, but I maybe would, ever slight edge to Rave just because they're playing in their comfort zone. Yeah, I would agree there. I think MVP kind of has the more countered draft, like they've kind of drafted around Rave's heroes, which is sometimes really good in that they've gotten the matchups that they want, but that also means that Rave is more comfortable on their yeah. heroes, like exactly like you said. So I'll give the slight edge to Rave as well going into this match. I, I actually think uh, MVP has a slight upper ha hand because I haven't seen, like, this exact draft, apart from the Disruptor, was the same as yesterday, and mm -hmm. MVP Phoenix was doing a really great job. They knew exactly what to expect, and I think because it's their comfort zone, MVP Phoenix know exactly how to counter it. And I think that gives a slight edge to MVP Phoenix, but I wouldn't say an outdraft in any way. I no, actually, yeah, like, this even. is a very even even draft and, and with that we are in the game so it is time for our tiebreaker match TA5 Southeast Asian qualifiers MVP Phoenix taking on Rave Gods and Perch take it away well, here we go a early fight over the top bounty rune and it looks like Team Rave are going to be the ones who hold position there it is Sven at the bottom lane all on his own getting the bottom one pretty normal uh, yep. Dire usually pushes towards the top rune the Radiant usually pushes towards the bot rune to secure, um, so no huge surprises there. Uh, MVP Phoenix obviously going to go for the safe trial lane, um, and two rune wards for MVP Phoenix there. And the dire team, I'm sorry, the Phoenix has one on the top. That's a dire ward top, excuse me. So rave one and this, top, and this is like an old school spot. Like I, I kind of call it like the newbie spot where it, it scouts yeah. out the ganks while scouting out the rune. But it used to be such an obvious ward that no one would use it because it always get dewarded. Are you talking but... about the dire one? Yeah, the the dire one at bottom lane. Yeah, it's and both players are <laughs> putting one there. But at some point, if it's an obvious spot, yeah. they'll be like, "Oh, there's no way he did it's the obvious spot." Occasionally, it does end up working. Ninja Boogie actually in a lot of trouble here. <laughs> I like the Wisp being in the off lane here. It works pretty nice with the Darks here for the chasing. He's not going to get the kill, of course, but good harass being done there. Yep, you draw the creep wave away. So mid lane's going to be Bristleback versus TA. 
As Chen brings in a Satya creep to help assist as well, give some HP regen, also provide some harass, and this will just give Q a bit of a, a rougher time here. Actually, uh, the way the cast plays, he does very harass with this first creep. He usually does that. Um, uh, some Chen's play a little differently. They'll do maybe a double stack, farm to level two, maybe go for a gank. But he always grabs his first creep and he sends it to a mid lane or a lane to zone. And that was really useful there because it is going to help a lot versus the TA. A couple extra right clicks will break refraction charges. And once his armor's gone, can burst him with those 125 damage nukes. It'll be very useful to help the Bristol win the lane. Somehow a big dire creep wave has made its way into yeah. the, the Radiant jungle. That's, I, I'm looking at this like, okay, that makes sense if it's a Radiant creep wave. Yeah. But or the old Fissure block where you could yeah. actually move the creeps in a weird place, but I have no idea how they got over there. This maybe just dragged the aggro with uh, the one of the heroes, but uh, Shaker getting some experience out of the off lane, but shouldn't be seeing much, uh, much actual farm going his way as the Witch Doctor's fan lane with decent kill potential as well as zoning potential from the Witch Doctor. Well, the Bristol has, or the, sorry, the Urshik has already gotten a couple levels, which is good for him. He'll grab a bounty rune on the top rune. Is he a bottle? He does. Yep. That's going to be really good. I th they both have bottles here in the mid lane, so things are going to go pretty equal from here on out. But with the stick on T, I could see him swinging around Radiant's and doing something. I mean, he's going to be fine, I think. Uh, both players are going to be fine here. It should just it's be passive farming from here on out. There's no real kill potential unless Rave bring, like, Chen and Disruptor, for yeah. example. And even then, it's they haven't really got a clear initiation outside of, like, trying to pull him back into, like, a glimpse st static storm. It could be uh, maybe an Earthshaker kill. gank. They did that yesterday. Ninja yep. Boogie pressured really, really well when he was playing Ventral Spirit, and the Earthshaker yeah. came once mid. And that's that's big damage potential. That's a Bottle Crow on the way. It's slow. Yep. It doesn't have flying yet, so... And Kuo had to use his one to stay alive there, so... Yeah, that's a little like scary. It was, it was a bit close. But, but how's it CS? 14 and 4 versus 11, so they think they're both pretty content in this lane. Yeah. Um, TA should be better as they continue, I think. At least pre-6, and then once it's 6, it could it just comes down to the gank. So the 1v1 mid matchup here is I think, going okay for both. Yeah. So, looking back towards the bottom lane, Earthshaker uh, approaching level 3 here is still not having much fun, though, against this Earthshaker. And CS-wise, MVP are getting farm in all three lanes, which is something that cannot be said about Earthshaker in the off lane. So, that's where this Wisp Darkseer off lane is working. But Rave, on the other hand, have a jungler. They have Chen, so that kind of is a bit of a difference maker and makes things a bit more even across the board as far as early game farm goes. So, fast level 3 for him. Uh, looks like he's not going to be ganking, just has a wildkin for now, so... Probably we'll just see him continue to passively farm. Ganking the top lane is not really going to work unless he gets p perfect creeps, and it seems like he hasn't. So instead, Chris is just going to passively farm the lane. He's already got 25 CS Quap versus Darkseer. It's a pretty good option, actually. A lot of melee heroes versus Darkseer have a lot of trouble, but if you're ranged and you have Blink, very low chance of him dying. Yep. So here we go. Four minute rune coming up. Rave want the top one, but here comes Darkseer and Wisp kind of close for a tether as well. J.O. really wants to fight for this one. Who's it going to go to? T.A. gets a haste rune. Oh, okay. catches him. Oh, March locked in the kinetic field and will be brought down, but on the other side, it's the TA looking for some turnaround. They lost a Wisp in the meantime as Chen rotated, and Kuo just going to have to rotate out despite the haste run. If he hadn't grabbed that, that would have been his death as well. Yeah, very likely, especially if they had a sentry or something like that. So, I th what do you think? Is that okay? Yeah, I guess they didn't get a rage kill. It was kill, two for nothing, so. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good trade. I don't know. The Wisp was kind of trying to tether from the low, from the high ground, but it looked like Chen kind of intercepted with the Disruptor, no, I, yeah. I, I assume that was going to be a one-for-one one for sure, since they were both committing to that happily, but didn't quite work out. Surge coming forward on March, and he's back into the wave to do some Iron Shell. That kinetic field from Ninja Boogie was so clutch, though. If that didn't land, it would have been maybe one hero dying on MVP, yep. so... And interesting skill build as well. Two in Thunderstrike. Ooh. I kind of like this against the Wisp and the Dark Seer. I guess Glimpse is useful, but... You know, they really... Sometimes Disruptor is a really weak damage hero, and one level of Thunderstrike is actually pretty good. It's a 160 damage nuke, but the second level puts it all the way up to what? Is that 240? Does that really do 240 damage? It actually yep. does. That's amazing for two skill points. That's almost a level... That's like a level three nuke. Yeah. Really good value skill. There is magic reduction for those of you unaware, but it's it's still a, one of the probably most high damage output spells at that mm -hmm. level, if, if not the most. So... Something, and that's where you're in a 2v2 laning step against a Wisp Darkseer. If it was a solo Darkseer, I think you get the glimpse, but yeah, definitely. Because you can't kill the Darkseer with the Wisp tethering and healing from behind with a bottle. That's where you need damage output more than the glimpse, because you pull him back. If you don't have the damage, you're not killing him. A little damage on the J.O., but really didn't do a whole lot. 
But once his bottle gets back, he's going to be just fine. Uh, next rune is up in 15 seconds. We'll see if we can see another scramble for it at the top rune. But this time, Phoenix is bringing all of their heroes. Yep. They're like, okay, we're really, we're not going to die this time. And they were split up last time was the big problem. Wisp yeah. was not really there, and he got kind of isolated, brought down. So he's going to take a, the longer route, but make sure he's there with his team. And Rave say, you guys could have it. We have a ward. We see what you're doing. We can take the bottom one if we want, although they're not going to go for it. It's going to go nuts' way. And they also see what rune it is, so no magic S4 rune, just going to be an illusion rune for TA. And J.O. wasn't really in fighting shape with his bottle coming out on the courier. It's pretty good levels on the Witch Doctor so far, he's sitting level 4. I feel like we haven't seen him sitting in lane that much, but he's finding experience somewhere. Um, oh, I'm sorry, he's been pulling apparently. Yeah. That's that, something that decent, I mean, 7CS, seen. nothing crazy, but at least something. And importantly, Rave scout out that Observer would get plopped down by Febby. We'll make an easy D ward and something that they can play around as well here. A little bit of chase on Jay here. He's doing some damage, but... Mm. Unlikely. Look at that. I was Quill just about damage. to say, this is not seem not wide. good for QO. That's going to be a death. I think Overcharge comes through to help out, but the bonus cool damage is too high. Fissure on Febby as well, and a double kill for Rave. Way too overextended. Yeah. He might have been able to kill him solo with just the Bristleback, because once that shield was down, then you got that double quill. That was amazing damage. If that, if that went a little earlier and they hit shield, he would have been fine. It was so. Banky on the Wisp behind him, but it's, at some point, it's like, you're not killing J.O. even with the Wisp behind you. I don't know what the expected result was there for Kyo, but it's something Kyo is kind of known for. Being over-aggressive sometimes in the mid lane, often it pays off, but every now and then he'll uh, miscalculate and make a dive like that where he gets really heavily punished. Boy, did they get punished there. They're already losing 2-0, to zero, and now up 4-0. No. Especially with Rave's draft, it's very early centric, fo or very early focused. So once they get a bit of advantage, maybe a mech up on a Chen, they can start pushing and doing some amazing Radiant things. And tower. most likely, I would expect them to do like a four-man push, put Chrissy somewhere else in the lane, split pushing and getting solo kills. Dyer's and I think that's going to be a... I guess they do have a, a Wisp, so they can deal with that with Relocate. But as long if the Sven doesn't get a lot out of the early game and then transition in some good team fights, I think they're going to get crushed by the five man. Yeah. Well, they can't really five man into a, a mech, I feel, as well. Even with levels on Darkseer Sven, they, it, they really need items. At that point, MVP may just be forced to farm towards the late game and hope that like a Sven plus Wisp with a TA as a secondary carry can take the late game. Their team fight's good. The Darkseer Sven yeah. is powerful. Warcry is going to get... That's the other thing. Sven needs a lot of level. He wants Cleave. He wants Warcry. To me, if, with MVP's bad early game, they're just going to have to play, fall back into a very farm-centric style of play. Yeah. I like how he's saving all of his skill points here. Um, the builds on Sven are pretty variable. You can do a lot of different stuff. Max Stormhammer, you can go Max Cleave. And so, he doesn't even have them in skill points. He's just sitting... How many points do you have? He has four points just sitting. And the cool part is that if he gets all of his Stormhammers right now, but then he it goes into a passive game and they're losing, then he wants to farm. If they're... Yep. You know, if they're winning, maybe more Stormhammer, maybe more Warcry might be better. So he's going to wait to see how the early game goes. Once the 12-minute rolls around, he can be like, okay, it's time to farm. I'm jungling. Great Cleave, bam, maxes it out. Especially so if there's cool. suddenly like a triple or a quad stack of Ancients that his supports have given yeah. him, which right now is starting to be built up. So yeah. It's looking like I, he's going to go Cleave, more yes. likely than not. I like this skill build, though. I, I think low stun with more Cleave is, is the best way to go yeah. on Sven, in most cases. Yeah, oh, well, like you say, just hold the skill points. If there's a kill opportunity, maybe quickly level it up and then throw, well, before you throw up the Stormhammer. But yeah. you're generally going to know if that's coming your way because you, the Sven can be the setup stun, but if, with the Witch Doctor support, the supports normally flank. They initiate and the Sven follows up. So, Helm of the Dominator, not the yeah. armlet or Mask of Madness you'd normally kind of see for a Sven, but... Uh, I saw Helm the other day when I think it was Kotaro Hayama playing in the NA qualifier, I believe he went Did he Helm. Did he dominate a range creep? What did he dominate? Um, just stacking, essentially. Yeah, range yeah, creep range or something. Yeah, range creep is great and, for stacking. And actually, it's going to be Kyo taking this, so okay. limits the farm on Sven a little bit. But that, that was one thing Kotaro did, is he anciented a lot when he played TA as well. Yes, TA is great, and it, it kind of limits the Sven's farm, but if you clear out the stack, by the time Sven wants to move, Sven doesn't necessarily want to move off the lane until he has more farm and more items anyway, so yeah. it could be another triple or quad stack by then, so potentially even more efficient by farming it now and then stacking it some more. Yeah, I, th I think that's a good position for him, especially because he did die that one time, and mid went all right for him, but not amazing. This little, He yeah. should be able to accelerate over the bristle if there's no ancient stacks, but it could be, maybe Chen has been stacking, no, he actually hasn't, so... Maybe, I think that's a good advantage for Phoenix. Uh, maybe there's some jungle stacks, but you know, I think that should have been maybe a four stack with Ancients, to be honest. I, we haven't seen Chen move except for there. So I feel like he could have been dedicating at least one neutral to stacking that consistently. It Something feels most Chens don't do. Feels like Raven may be giving MVP a bit too much room to have their Ancient stacks, farm up these lanes. 
Dominic with the early game stat they had, I think fortified. they're playing too passively. Like, contesting stacks is one of the big things they could be doing right now. Yeah. Oh, or at least pushing bot lane. I mean, they pushed yeah. top and they took that, but that's where the Sven's from. And if they if they limit the Sven a bit, maybe ward up the jungles, then Sven basically has nowhere to go because the TA would be doing Ancients plus mid lane. And March may be going on a who that almost missed. Very, Just very clips close. him the Shadow Strike damage. Gonna be close here. Dax is ticking down. TA rotates in as well. Can bottle up March? Does do so. And it's uh, gonna be blink, Blink's ready. He's gonna Scream blink. is out of mana. He's gonna TP. Okay. He was maybe about 20 mana short for a Scream and then would have been maybe in a very dangerous position. It was a good attempt, but didn't get the kill. I think uh, the bottle charge may have saved him. I, I don't know how many Shadow Strike ticks were left on, yeah, the, it was, on him. It was very, very It close. was just level 1 Shadow Strike, so I think he may have been okay, but it, yeah. It was so close. I, I really don't know. You never know. It seems like Raven may be just waiting too much on Queen of Pain to farm up an Orchid, but that's really giving MVP a lot of space here. Yeah, and especially using that to attempt for a solo kill and it didn't work. I mean, they, they could have used that, that danger to take a tower, I feel, if Quap was in the area with her ultimate. Um, There's the cleave. Does max it out. Very, very good with Quelling Blade. You can just farm so rapidly. And with the helm, of course, he can stack Ancients, and then later he can disassemble, he can later make an armlet. Uh, we haven't seen an armlet on Sven in a long time, actually. But <laughs> They smoke up bottom and just no one's here. That is... It's the stacking we need. Yeah, they're gonna start stacking. We'll be scattered about by MVP. And Rave with three heroes bottom should be looking to push and pressure this tier one tower. Sven not in the neighborhood. Can TP in, but Treads Helm the Dominate. This is not really a good time for Sven and MVP to be finding, outside of the fact that Sonic Wave is on cooldown, which does work kind of nicely in their favor. I think he can uh, get away with a later BKB this game. I mean, it's really... I guess there's a Disruptor, that's the biggest problem. You basically want the BKB when you want to fight. I feel like you're not going to get a BKB to dodge ganks, but when you, you think your team needs to start fighting and defending towers, that to me is when you want to feel the BKB. big damage work I use as well. The chase, there's a follow-up stun on Jo. He's in trouble. You're definitely going to go down. Does get cleaned up. Disruptor glimpsing back somebody. It's going to be Febby leaving the fight. And trying to grab my nuts, but I don't think he'll grab them. No, oh, KP um, though, he's now surrounded nicely. Ryu's coming to clean up, gets one kill on the Earthshake. A second goes the way of Chrissy. And they turn this one around pretty nicely there. Nice glimpse back on the Wisp, and Wisp tethered and uh, well, forces it to break, and then you can't bring back any of your teammates. They got Sven and the TA there. That's the worst possible heroes to die in Phoenix. It looked like a good way to start off the fight. I think the. Maybe Wister just being there with a TP in and use the relocate defensively to save someone. I, they, I think they overdove a little bit. I mean, they got the bristle and then they kept going and they, then they completely spread out and I think that was the issue with it. I, and f I think the Sven was sitting very close to a blink dagger before that fight anyways. Like, it maybe just wait a bit longer. He ended up buying out before he dies, it looks like, but... I... I wonder if they just should have farmed him a bit more. He had, you know, a couple more minutes there for Phoenix yeah. and he would have had an item like a BKB and I feel more. Now towards bottom lane, Rave go. Dax here on the defense here. Lion shell up a creep and hope for the best. And Poor skeletons. <laughs> Rave have three of their five heroes down here with Bristleback over at the Ancients. Doesn't look like he's intent on pushing. He wants to get some more stacks going. That's some good stacks. So just a couple Chen, or just like one Chen creep focusing on that actually does so much. Yeah. It limits Chen's farming capabilities by maybe 25% or less, and every single time 200 gold. Kyo getting big fissure actually going to catch him there. That guarantees the multiple silence. He's getting so low, but the bottle, last second, he stays alive. We'll be turning this around. That should be a two shot on Ninja Boogie. He does go down rapidly. That was a really good attempt, but I don't even think they have uh, Quapple. No, they don't. Oh, they do. do? I'm sorry. Yeah. But the, Could have maybe uh, going to throw up by Kyo. Now That's he gets hit on Fissure. There That's they go. That's that was a kill. Oh, a little bit misplayed by Chrissy. Goes in, misses a scream though, and that should be his death. They turn it around completely. Un uh, rare ma mistake yeah. from him. Like, how often do you see him make those I mistakes? He assumed the refraction was up. Now they're going to get Ryu as well, and they may chase down Cast on the Chen. Ray getting stormed upon as the bolt catches out Cast. The death ward there as well, and that's a fall oh, for man. nothing. They're back in the game completely. Oh. They had a 6-1 to one advantage, but all of a sudden it's evened up. Yeah, so Quop assumes, I guess, T has Refraction up, but then you see that Fissure. The Fissure does damage, and that's where the Sonic Wave should have been chained chain right after, but yeah. you have to react like instantly to get that. It's definitely scary, because if you go in and he pops Refraction, you die. But to make matters worse, it wasn't even an outplay in that sense. He just simply didn't land the blink. He wasn't close enough. Yeah, he, he blinked Dyer's forward. I think he could have maybe thrown Sonic Wave from afar, but yeah. hard to say. We'll take another look at that one, though, now that things have uh, died Dyer's down again. And we'll have a catch of what actually happened here. 
So I like the initiation from Ninja Boogie sitting on the right side. The fissure with the static field was amazing, but there just wasn't any fall. Oh, it looks like Ryor actually missed his enchant totem. Didn't have Echo yep. Slam there, so if he had Echo Slam, it would that was uh, that's why I see him running in like, oh, it's gonna Echo Slam an easy kill. But. Yeah, they really needed that kill. I like the dagger on Kyo here because it does break a lot of his shield charges. But at this point, he was retreating. I don't think he had Blink. He has Sonic Wave here. He could just turn and throw. That's where he, to me he's in position. He's actually was in range for a Sonic he Wave. Thought about it for a second there, and then he hesitated. Yeah. If he just would have gone, he would have gotten the TA kill, but I think he was still dead no matter what. I, he had to Sonic wave from range. I well, think. he blinked full, He blinked into them at the end there, so... He did. But Which is where he could have Sonic wave without even having to blink forward. Like, he was in range, could have Sonic wave, then just blink to safety maybe, but... Yeah. Very easy to say from an observer's point of view. These players have to react on the fly. The, the main issue, though, was not killing the TA yes. uh, in the first attempt. They really needed to have that kill, but level 1 static field, it does good damage, but... That with just an Earthshaker, I think, is not enough damage without an Echo Slam. They needed a Creep Wave and Echo Slam. It was a great initiation, but it didn't quite work. That puts Sven well on top of the net worth chart here, and also helps Dyer's complete the Darkseer mech. And Sven BKB, big items coming the way of MVP, and this is where they can team fight just fine. Wraith yeah. can't really five-man towers against these big item pickups, including a TA Deathslay. They've got the Queen of Pain Orchid, but the timing for this suddenly doesn't look as scary when MVP have items ready to kind of five-man into it. It's now the MVP five-man. Yeah, definitely. And especially with Sven getting BKB, I love how he's getting more Warcry levels as well. So the little damage that Wraith is already putting on is now going to be reduced by 15 armor to his entire team every time he presses well, they the smoke W button. Past the Observer, or the MVP may not be ready for this. This way you'd love to catch up the Wisps to start the fight. He does get spotted. There's the glimpse back, and Kyo in a lot of trouble taking so much damage. Can Wisdom in it back? Great, Great Fissure. Data. I think that did stop the relocate, so now Febby is on the retreat. That Fissure was so big. Echo Slam stopping March as well, and Chant Totem gets him low, and bam, a swing around. Every time somebody has the advantage, the other team yeah. just comes back and so puts them in the dirt. I was waiting for the Sonic Wave, but Queen of Pain just blinked behind everyone, and Orchid and Solo killed the Witch Doctor, so nice kind of... Just nice use of their resources on the side of Ray. They figured they have enough to kill the TA. Queen of Pain didn't actually go for the front lines on the TA and just said, look, I'm going to deal with the backline supports. The, the Disruptor Ninja Boogie has been playing so well for countering TA, and that's what you have to do in the early game. If, if TA can basically survive enough ganks and do well in team fights, she becomes a very serious hard carry. But if you can shut her down in a couple of fights here, it helps so much. Ooh, breaks apart the Dominator. Not too surprising. See. Armlet probably... The yep. last time I saw this, they just sold the Helm of Iron Will, but I think it's okay to keep. The downside of going to the armor build is you run out of item slots really fast, yes. but it's very efficient right here. It's one of the strongest builds you can get. If they want to team fight now and fight early, armor it's the way to go. It's yeah. going to come down if he wants to play towards the late, play towards a late game centric style or something more early game. It's good with the Wisp as well because Wisp is giving you regen, so I feel like it yep. counteracts the whole degen thing, um, and it's a. You have to remember that Armlet's a 60 damage item for 2,500 gold on Strength Heroes. That's amazing damage output. You're getting like double the value of a Demon Edge, more or less. And with God's Strength, it's it's even boosted higher, so... Well, they're gonna sneak their way into the Roshan Pit. Raven nearby, that's a Blink Dagger on Earthshaker as well, but they have to scout it out first, and... Doesn't look like that's something that Rave are gonna do here. What do you do against the the sneaky roaches? So many teams are doing sneaky roaches lately, and I mean, look how fast that dies. That's they 30 could seconds. leave a Chen creep in there. That's that's about it. But if they even smoked it, I guess the fact that Sven is on the map makes it even less likely Roshan's going on in their mind. Yeah, I guess, but with TA alone, you know, the double. I think with Roche lineups, at some point, if they time their smoke in, it, you're just not going to be there to check it. Sometimes. Yeah. Great blink there from Yor. Look at that individual skill, man. Will they vacuum? No, nope, they won't get him. That was such a good reaction time. But that's probably why they got the Deso. Uh, sometimes we don't see TAs going Deso first, so it'll be a blink, maybe a BKB. But the Deso minus armor, just the Roche is so easy to get. You cast a smoke there, trading a smoke for a Roche is always worth it. And all that minus armor means any they can just snipe it within 40 it seconds. It has made Kyo very squishy and an early target for Rape yes. in these team fights. He's 1 and 3 and hasn't been able to contribute too much. and. Even with an Aegis, I feel like they could just look to kill him once and then go for a second time. They missed the glimpse into Static Storm combo. Again, a blink back from mm. Rior, baiting out the Storm KP hammer. has Armlet now, so he's ready to fight another two-hero Fissure. There's no chain stun to follow this one up. They're going to Crimson Guard up and look to fight the Death One at the backlines from the Witch Doctor, doing some good damage, but being blocked largely. Great Sonic Wave through, QO. Still oh, alive, but now, and Rave get blowing up. KP in the front lines with a BKB Mask of Madness. Tears apart. Rave is the buyback here. Oh Blink and go slam Rio! Oh, my God. as well! Holy oh my cow! God.
that fight was completely lost by Ray, but Rio completely turning it around. I that looks what a so hero. over. They got Rave were out of that fight. Completely. I saw Chris's buyback. I'm like, I don't know if this is worth worth buying back into. And then Rio says, no, don't worry, don't worry. This, this, we lost a lot of games against Rio doing that exact thing on heroes like Magnus. He just has the team fight sense, man. He sees it coming. I, I just, I don't care about the start of the fight. I just want to see the echo slam. We'll get there eventually, though. I'm, but I, so KP just BKBs and what just tears everyone apart. Yeah, basically. I mean, he's look at the cleave here. He's hitting three heroes in a moment. Here he's gonna hit cast vacuum. That actually. vacuum was that oh, vacuum that was wall was vacuum. really nice. And they chase him out, and that's at that point you're losing a lot of HP from armlet. He'll turn his armlet off here, hitting about 900 HP. And as they clump towards the tower, here comes the echo slam. That was a five hero echo slam. Essentially, bonus damage there. March gets shredded by the fissure and. What a team fight. Great play by Rior. His game sense is just so good for team fights. He knows exactly when to go in. Well, that makes things more interesting here. Did cost him a buyback, so net worth change isn't as favorable as maybe Rave would hope for, but it is going their way, up to about a 3,000 net worth lead. So that's two team fights in a row that Rave has won. The only advantage they lost there was that MVP did get Roche. But. You know, that was Aegis. I assume Aegis and he died after, right? Yes, he died twice. How did he die the first time? The Echo Slam. Okay. He died in the Echo Slam and then he kind of came back up and just... Got the, clean. Yeah, I mean, it was like 1v however many. Wow, 1300 damage from an Echo Slam. That is amazing. Well, He's level 13 now. That's really strong for the early game. He's got a 4 staff right. You're going to see a lot of chain stuns. BKB is even more important for TA now because he's survivable and he can stun her for 4 seconds. And that's the other thing in that last fight. That was the first BKB use from Sven and that's going to start ticking down shorter and shorter as this game goes on. Already, I mean, 9 seconds is still pretty healthy for now, but if Rave can drag things out in the late game, having a 5 second BKB normally doesn't cut it. I really like the Crimson Guard this game, actually. Uh, first of all, it stops the Death Ward. But do you know it also stops cleave? It does. You okay. damage block cleave. So nice. as long as you crimson guard your whole team, oh, the wow. cleave that the Sven is putting out is gonna be reduced by 80 per hit, which is pretty significant. So you, do you get like the it, it blocks the initial damage as well? Like does it work twice on the heroes being cleaved upon uh, then? it should just no, it should just block I mean, it damages blocks the attack, and it also damages blocks the cleave. But okay. you can't be hit by the attack and the cleave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. So it, it'll reduce the, the cleave damage by 80. That's pretty significant. I mean, obviously, he's hitting very hard. Once he gets a Daedalus, it's not going to really make an impact. But cleave, or cleave is one of the few things that damage block hits. That's that's uh, something you don't think about. Until often. the vacuum wall that last fight, you, KP was not doing as much damage as you'd normally expect a Sven to be doing with his current items, so... Yeah, that's true. It was really that vacuum wall into, like, the iron shell. Like, there was magic damage mixed in there as well. Mm -hmm. Sven's kind of good at all stages of the game, I feel. Once he gets Mask of Madness, it's he's really dangerous. But the limiter is usually that he's a bit slow or that your opponents aren't locked down enough, so... That was, that was about three hits with the vacuum, though. Like, a vacuum alone is enough, usually, to get the kills if they can't escape immediately afterwards, so... It could easily go MVPs. Like we could favor. We could see five man swings both ways for the yes. rest of the game. It's entirely possible. Entirely comes down to execution. I mean, if Ryu with that last second huge echo slam, if that doesn't happen, if there was something that had canceled the blink deck, whatever it may be, that's just a one team fight for MVP, and they get a what, four for nothing basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, Blink Dagger for QO, so he's opting for the mobility. Still having some trouble snowballing on him, 1, 4, and 3. I don't know if this game looks better as it continues. If he had an early advantage, I could see him wrecking the whole thing with two shots on Earthshaker and Disruptor, but because those support heroes are strong, it's it's going to get tough at this yeah. point. I guess Ninja Boogie's still a little weak with only Tranquil Boots and a Wand Urn. Pretty common Disruptor build, but until he gets a Force or a Ghost, he definitely still can get killed. You can easily see Earthshaker picking up a Ghost Scepter if he wants to as his next item with the, the farm he's been getting and... Just, they're relatively tanky. Blink full stuff is enough mobility to normally get away from a TA, so... Jail bottom lane. So maybe be a bit careful. Sven off to the side has Wisp behind, but... He's hoping for any other hero from the Yeah, side. yeah. He could actually kill anybody else. Ulti, Blink, Stun. That's the that's a dead hero. Relocate out from the Wisp, although that's where you maybe end up sacrificing the Wisp. If you have to use that defensively. So for now, I think MVP kill. decide they're just going to farm. They don't have Aegis anymore. They can't really... Well, they could 5-man regardless, but it's a bit more risky to play that way. The Blink should be revealed on Sven now due to him farming that last creep wave. So hopefully they do react according to this. They still have to be very careful in the team fights. He's going to... You know, he's pretty much out of item slots. And this is the problem with the build, especially with a Blink. He's You basically buy all these mid-game items. 
mid-game items, and as you skill in the late game, you start having to replace stuff, and then you lose a lot of efficiency. You're like, oh, I have to yeah. sell my armlet. Armlet's one of the most frustrating to sell, I feel, because it does get so much value for such a cheap item, but you're like, why would I not have an AC or a heart instead? It just makes... And even Makes playing without sense. a TP scroll, you have to maybe change things up. Because if yep. your Wisp gets found, suddenly you can't BKB TP out. Your only escape is the Wisp relocate. So if Rave happened to blow up the Wisp with a Sonic Wave, yeah, you've got BKB, but you haven't got a TP out. And you're just trapped and stuck on like deep in the map. That's true. Uh, Halberd pickup from Bristol, really good counter against Sven as well as TA. Definitely very good against TA, I feel. Especially because she doesn't have a BKB yet. But the evasion on him will, will do a bit, especially against Witch Doctor Ulti. Uh, Jail's becoming a very, very tanky hero in this game. It should allow him to create a lot of space for his squishier allies. Yep. So, we'll see where he goes next. I think even just stacking some more defensive armor, like getting either an AC or a Shiva's Guard. I guess the Shiva's Guard is maybe a bit too defensive in that he wants to maybe have some late game damage output. If, uh, since Queen of Pain's their only other real late game damage here. Yeah. And Queen of Pain's gone BKB, so has a defensive armor. I think if you go Shiva's, maybe it's too defensive. I think so, definitely. Um, if you're going to get an armor item, it's definitely AC this game because of the Sven and the, the TA. Give armor to your allies, especially. Like, those, they're not lacking attack speed because they have a Wisp and a Mask of Madness. I think yes. the, the more important thing is to go for allies' armor and uh, minus armor as well. Guiding Greaves pick up for Doxia. Not in which... Okay. It gets picked up every now and then. It never seems to... It's it, I I don't know I'm not, I'm kind of mixed about this item. Me too. I don't think I've ever seen it win a team fight. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, it's hard to tell though because once people get low, they mostly get bursted down and it's uh, then there's a lot of magic damage on Rave as well. So I think Guardian Greaves is the wrong item here. I, it does save them an item slot, I guess. They're gonna relocate gank the ancients, <laughs> hoping for a stack, I guess. Meanwhile, top lane March has been left alone. He's isolated. He's gonna vacuum wall all four, but. Without the follow-up, that's just an easy retreat from Rave. Another good reason oh, to have Crimson Guard stops the illusion damage very well. And here comes MVP. As well, are they gonna try this? They get him J.O. on the face. Well, he's gonna take a lot of damage. Great Fissure, though, gonna stop things up. T.A. on the back line, but getting chains done from the Earthshaker. And it looks like a disengage. Nope, turning back around. Kyo's trapped under... Boy, did he get blown KP's up. BKB about to wear off. The blink out may save his life, but the chase is on. J.O. wants Chrissy to go forward. That wrecked. Death Ward will not find Chrissy in the trees. Chrissy's low, ticking oh, to the Maledict. He may survived. die to this. No, he's survived. Barely survived. So that was the last tick, and now Nuts gonna get hit by the scream. Chrissy just playing. Keep away in the trees. The Wisp Ball's looking for him. We'll find him. Febby gets a kill before he goes down, but that's still a four-for-one trade. As KP, the lone survivor, doesn't have a BKB and probably cannot defend this Tier 2 tower. Things were just a little too disorganized there for Phoenix. They didn't or they didn't all do the same thing. You know, TA went far in the back line trying to get a solo pick off, but was kited by Earthshaker and Disruptor. Sven wanted to just DPS everybody, but he needed a vacuum stun or a Witch Doctor cask on just heroes so that he could do the DPS. You need to have your opponents get distracted when you're playing Sven so that you can just hit him down and kill him. Yep. But he they got weren't kited. on the same page. He, yeah, at kited. the start of the fight, he got hit by that long-range fissure by the tip of it. Then the Chen creeps were like just in his way, like they ensnared him. He, he BKB to deal with like the Chen creeps, and he spent half his BKB attacking Chen creeps because there was no enemy heroes near him. That's not a good place to be for for a Sven. So, Rave taking the nice team fight, four kills. I love Cast picking up Dark Trolls. If he can just get multiple Dark Trolls, he can yeah. completely stop the Sven from doing anything good. That would be good for him. What does uh, Cast have for items? I assume Mech Arcane. He's going Vlad's. And a Vlad's. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I like the Vlads versus TA. Five armor for you and your teammates is good. Yeah. The Ag Scepter, I think, I, I slightly prefer the Ag, but it's a much tougher build. It's more expensive. So if he's feeling like we're going to be fighting now, I want another item to tip the scales, the Ag's yeah. won't come for five more minutes or something. But it's definitely something very good for Bristleback. A lot of times I'm like, oh, I have Bristle, I've got a base e anyways, I should build the Vlads, but it's the wrong choice in most cases because you don't scale as well. So having it on a support, I think, is really nice. Yep. Lifesteal for him. He hits really hard and armor to deal with the TA. He got blown up really hard by the Sven, actually. The Sven just was wailing on Bristol in that last fight, so I think the armor will make a big difference. MVP now. Looking for a jump at top. And there's a Crystallis pickup by Sven, so he's dropped off his TP scroll and looking for kills. I like that Chrissy's playing a little safe on the creep wave. If he was actually standing under the, the creeps consistently, they would have gone for that kill, but since he was poking in and out, they were a little scared to go. Fight on the bottom lane, it's Kyo getting caught. He looks really dead, needs a blink there, or needs a BKB, but doesn't have it. Ulti comes down from Witch Doctor, trying to get the kill. Kyo is still getting a clean up, though. 
He got kept alive, the Earthshaker. They didn't have any detection for him. Now Nuts is going to be brought down. Fabi trying to tether his way through, but that just may lead to an extra couple of kills. Fabi relocates back top. Didn't bring the Sven with him. I'm not sure if that was according to plan or not, but I imagine it was not. Uh, I don't know. I, I, Sven could push the lane. It, it didn't seem like a one fight. I think he was just going there trying to save him, to be honest. Uh, could have is that the right. Disruptor with the Glimmer Cape? Uh, I think Earthshaker, possibly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Earthshaker. Is in, that's a lot of fun. I mean, you remember that Echo Slam. We got, oh, vacuum wall in the hot run. This is pretty okay. good for them. Stun on J.O. Uh, or J.O. TPing. Sorry, everyone TPing. It's just Ryo getting caught. He's going to blink soon. Oh, gets the blink off. Okay. Okay. They can now look to kill off March. Chrissy should have an orchid soon. The TP out. Ryo, can he force up? Oh, he didn't force. He probably canceled it accidentally. Yeah. KP and I in trouble. Uh, tether up in one. No relocate for 30 seconds. And this is where KP's like, uh, I wish I still had my TP scroll. This is a problem. They glimpse back, tether breaks, and dead wisp. Yeah. Maybe he should have saved the tether there in anticipation of the glimpse. It's kind of hard to say. They would have chased if he didn't tether. If he yep. doesn't tether, then... Or if he does tether, then he gets glimpsed. So, unfortunate for Phoenix, they're losing a bunch of heroes. Bought uh, by Roshan as well as top. And Rave get the Aegis. Creep with the immediate blink down to pick that one up. It yeah. looked like it could have gone very very south for them. Everyone trapped on that cliff with illusions wailing away on them that we're just going to keep on summoning. But the insta TPs. Nice, smart reaction from Rave once they got vacuum walled. So Aghanim Scepter now for Chrissy in a moment. And Jo with 4,200 gold. He really has had no threats this game, I feel. Like, even, even the one time he did get hit on the face by Sven, he just was never really at a threat of dying. And Heaven's Hellward, yeah, making a huge difference. The evasion, the tankiness, Assault Curious is his next pickup. I would love to see a heart next, maybe. Just He's already got so many survivability items, you might as well stack them all together. Because at that point, he's he's still going to be very strong versus a, a TA and a Sven Lake. It's more if you want to have the Abyssal Blade, I guess, yeah, to, that's, to lock him down. That's your, like, that's your choice. If you, have, if you think you're tanky enough that Sven's not going to kill you, and also he's less likely to kill you if he's getting stunned during his BKB duration. That's true. Really good, yeah, that's a good point. Really good way to deal with him in BKB. But I, just, I, I could see it working both ways. Like, with the AC, you can maybe deal with him in BKB. With the heart, he's just never going to kill you. So yeah. I think both approaches work. Gives you more quills, too. That's the important part. Um, Bristle's HP gain actually isn't that good. It's worse than his int gain, I believe. So building HP items on him is pretty good. 2.2 yeah. versus 2.8. See? Wow. Fortified. So, still about 600 short of the AC, but they're going to now just five men down the mid lane. Take out the tier 2 tower. This is where MVP going to resort to some split push. Darks is up top with Sven down bottom. They're going to catch up Witch Doctor inside of the base. Chrissy blinks him with an Orchid and Nuts. Oh, he's getting blown by TA. Chrissy, all the Glimmer Cape saves him completely. And the heal, he should be able to blink away now. Yeah, he barely makes it up. That was so good play by Kyo there. Oh, getting a cast as well. He does. No splash damage to keep your arm position, but he blinks for it with the Iron Shell. Couple more hits, and QO is winning the team fight. Great comeback from him. That's Had a really rough game so far, but what a swing around there. That's the value DD rune. That's oh, that was DD. Yeah, that, that was all. I was about to say, I, I'm like, this does not make this does not add up based on QO's items. I'm like, okay, he has a DD rune. His damage output based entirely around that. They're gonna chase down some Chen creeps as well, but Ray pushing pushing with an Aegis and kind of five v two, five v three ish. Still get just beaten down by a TA. Yeah, adding 100 damage there. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, he had Deso, nothing new other than the BKB, but Quap definitely usually builds high armor, or sorry, high HP, low armor. So she's pretty vulnerable to the TA, actually, and with the BKB as well. BKB and the Aghanims really don't do anything do you, to keep them. Do you like the third item pick up on the axe? This might have been a Shiva's game, honestly, because yeah. it's all physical damage output for MVP. Death Ward, Sven, uh, the cleave obviously is pure, so it goes through it, but the the TA is all physical. If not so. Shiva's, at least like a Ghost Scepter, which you could later yeah. turn to an E-Blade, but... I think Shiva's is the no, option, I, though, honestly. I think Shiva's would be amazing. The, but with the Axe, he can pick off the supports pretty much every fight. Um, you know, the, the Witch Doctor, the Wisp, they're, they're very threatened by that. It's a hard decision. You, you either go for the I'm never going to die, or you go for the I'm going to guaranteed be ready to team fight and gank always. Yep. Well, down bottom, MVP go, but no T2 towers here. Just pushing out lanes here. Top lane relocate. They're going to go in on Chrissy. Has, has no blink for a couple seconds. Does have oh, a BKB. He's like, oh, he's... thanks for the feed. <laughs> exactly. He's going to turn and fight for now. Then he blinks out. Did use a BKB charge. Has an Aegis as well, so. Looks like he ulted a creep wave earlier. He ulted to solo kill the Witch Doctor. 
Oh, I see. I didn't see the wish yeah. doctor that. I'm sorry. Well, that makes sense. I guess that's worth it for him then. He, he almost went on Febby. He's like, eh, I'll try this. <laughs> It's it's really scary though, the TA just or actually those the Sven, the Sven does so much damage. He has to get a Shiva's Dying next, I feel. On the Quap. He's just dying to four shots, five shots of anything. Yeah, Sven with Daedalus, so Yeah, if he gets hit by a stun initiation, he's he's pretty done for. But Rafe now gonna go back and push. The last time this did not work well for him, but that was when Q had a DD. This time around, no DD room to speak of. Q cool. goes in actually. It's halberded up, but now from the side, oh, here comes Chris KP, down. brings down the Oshaker to start the fight off. This is where Rave have lost their big team fighting power. They may just need to send Jo back to Fountain, they will do so. Cast instead will pay for this one with his life. That's Ooh. a dead hero. Yes. <laughs> I thought they were going to play with her. Yeah, at first I, I thought the same. Like, let's just let him walk around for a bit and taunt him. Mind games. I don't think it's going to do very much though. Just wastes a bit of time. And they should be able to get the tier 2 off of this. Chris is still dead for 50. He does have buyback, so he can show back up in the fight if he needs to. They have the lane pushed out. Top lane's getting very close to base here. They want to swing top after the tier 2 tower. Bristol actually has so much HP here. 2. And they have they have their ultis. Like they have the, the Doxy vacuum wall. He actually takes no damage from the back here. And even on the front, he takes very low. There's the Maledic. That makes him a little scared. That forward as well. Vacuum catches 3, but no stun follow up. He. Jumps on in, ultimate as well, um, Disruptor to slow things down, but that's not going to do anything. And that's a cooldown that they maybe need in the fight. And there was a buyback from Chrissy, so mm. they didn't get enough value from that, I don't think. No, I didn't think they, they got nothing out of the, the Queen of Pain buyback there. And Sven also, I mean, Sven didn't follow up the vacuum wall because he didn't want a BKB. He was stuck in the kinetic field and decided, I'm going to hold my BKB from I'm actually fighting. MVP haven't quite kind of fine-tuned their, their Darkseer Sven combo. I mean, it's not even about hitting the vacuum onto three to four heroes with the Storm Bolt. It's just making sure Sven is there to cleave yeah. more than anything. The way you basically time it is you cast Storm Bolt on anybody, and then as soon as the vacuum pulls them together, the Storm Bolt goes to the clump. You don't have to cast it as the vacuum like as the vacuum has been casted. The, yep. the organization has to be a little earlier than that. And if they can do that, that's three dead heroes, pretty much guaranteed. As long as Sven has his ultimate up and he doesn't get stunned, by Earthshaker during it. it. It should be a guaranteed kill. So it's pretty much up to Rave, either interrupting the Sven on the backside, maybe Quap can deal with him, but I think Quap's going to aim for the supports more often, yeah. honestly. I think Quap really wants to hunt, hunt the Wisp especially to start fights off, but not as easy to do anymore with the Glimmer Cape pickup on Febby. I guess that's Earthshaker's job then. He's the one that should be looking to disrupt the carries. Yeah. Earthshaker wants to try and force out early BKBs even, like with just... Fissure chain stuns, and I mean, that's what Disruptor and Earthshaker are both been doing. That might spend on a ninja boogie here, but the entire rave team is there. We actually lost camera one second, guys. <laughs> well, it's a BKB, and we're back as KP okay. gets fissured up. His BKB's worn off. He's gonna get glues back in. He's isolated. Oh, wh where'd he go? Oh, relocate out. Whoa, nice clutch save. play. Gets pulled back. Now the Wisp is going to be pulled back in, and I don't think they want to fight this with the uh, Sven BKB on cooldown. He's, he's breaking it, yeah. Yep. Febby going to be tethering to the side. Actually, no, they're going to fight with a Q on BKB. I don't know if that's the plan with Sven still back at base. Critty goes in with the Sonic Wave. Oh, Good Kyrie. damage. The Fissure does not hear his Q is still in BKB form. Kyrie goes down in the middle of things here. They're going to chase on for March. KP is Damn, back. So high. Nice with Tether. Oh. Tether will keep March alive. J.O. getting cleaved down with the Earthshaker. Rave getting beat down by Sven. They've lost two, taking out only a Witch Doctor and Darks here. And MVP turned this one back in their favor. Q is pretty low, but getting healed up by Febby. And not going to spot on Ninja Boogie. It went even, surprisingly. Febby played that fight really well. He, I mean, initially with the Tether out where they kind of chased him. And then yeah. he kept the Dark Seer alive with a Tether overcharge and some heals. But they break even. Um, TA is alive. Sven's alive. I think that was better for MVP, actually. Yeah. Uh, I think Bristle so, Bristol or Shicker, pretty even, I guess. And they also did snipe a courier with the Quap ulti during the fight. And there was items on there. I think a Demon Edge, at least. So, QO's Demon Edge. So, probably uh, Daedalus for him. Oh, MKB, okay. Uh, to deal with the Halberd, I guess. QO's so. starting to become a lot more menacing in these fights when he goes in yeah. with the Blink BKB. He really did a nice job catching up with that DD. I, I thought that he was going to be a non-factor the rest of the game, but getting a double like that just puts you back in it. A bit surprised, like, none of the Wraith heroes have Ghost Scepters at this point, considering yeah. you're against a TA Sven. It's very physical damage, you're right. Um, I feel like Earthshaker could use one, but they've been getting so much value out of their Glimmer Capes. They've been consistently just Glimmer Caping anybody that's a target. Yes. And they never have vision, because, I mean, TA can't really hold the gem. Sven definitely can't. He's got far too many item slots. 
or far too few item slots, excuse me. Um, he's building a heart, though, for his last item. I think this is a good choice. The way, the reason it's so good is because uh, when you use great God Strength, it's based on your primary damage attribute, and by getting a heart, you get 40 more of that, so you're basically getting, what, 80, 120, it's like 200% at max level, right? So you're getting 80 damage out yep. of your heart when you use your ulti. That's like... That's like a Daedalus almost. It's really good. Yeah, and then that's on top of that, you're getting crits every now and then, so it's it's and really a, and good And the damage. HP. It's basically like an HP and damage item for heroes like Sven. So up to, yeah, 3.3k HP. It's going to crit really hard. He mm. could still just completely swing team fights with one hit. Yep. And from here, you maybe replace the Mask of Madness with an AC, but... Yeah, or the Moon Shard, of course. He's gonna break the smoke. BKB. Oh, Fisher's gonna start things off. Can they chase on him? Nope, he gets his ultimate off. The vacuum comes through. Well, they get the cleave. It's coming through. Everybody's dying. Oh my Ooh, god. Full stop coming to the high ground. Rio's still alive. Looking for a bleak echo slide potentially. Can he turn this one around? It looks like he's just gonna scurry away as the fight's been oh lost. Ray lose four. Lucky to keep Earthshaker alive. And now it's their turn to lose their courier. As MVP gonna march towards the dire base, force out some buybacks, at least those that exist, and it's only two. Now a 3v5 for Ray. They need a miraculous Echo Slam to stand a chance here, and I don't think it's gonna do anywhere near enough damage to this tanky Sven. Good vision from Rior, gonna get some chains on QO, but uh, they actually could kill him here. Are they gonna send him back with the relocate? Dump goes in onto QO's low. Febby, will he retreat him? He hasn't used relocate yet, just waiting on it, but that's Urshaker following. Or falling, sorry, QO dropping down. Jail's not done. Febby's getting low. He might have to relocate. Does get picked up. Now chasing. Raid's turning around somehow. KP and I running for his life. They might glimpse him back. There's the relocate as well. Oh, Buy back the from coconuts! Wisp. Oh no, Jail! And that's gonna end the chase there. Oh boy. Man, this game is so back and forth. They go back and right click down. Oh, they get him! Just falls to the wall here. Gets two more kills. He doesn't care how low his HP is. He gets another two kills. And with buybacks just used, this is. Mid lane completely exposed and vulnerable, only Bristleback alive. MVP looking like they'll take a lane of Rax and possibly the game off of this. And the heart is just going to keep him at full HP, so even if they do respawn, Sven now is everything ready to go. He'll even have BKB by the time, like, Urshaker's back. Can he turn? I'm, I don't know if he can kill the... No, run away from the Queen of Pain it. respawn. He's full HP. He, the Sven can. It's a matter of whether the other heroes are in fighting shape. And yeah. It, they, they need more lockdown, I think, than just the Sven. He's going to make sure they're not Roshan. I'm about to say Sven could even go into the Roshan. <laughs> he is going to go there. General area, at least. Okay, so chance there with a, with a neutral creep already scouting things out. and Rave... May just go for a YOLO Roche of their own, because at this point they are in a really tough position. The amount of money okay. they just spent on that lost fight, yeah, not good. I think Jo's items were very strong for the mid game, but I think they needed more late game out of Bristleback, because yeah, Sven yeah. doesn't even care. Sven was doing a lot of damage hitting his back. As much sprints. as the Halberd seems like a great value pickup, it's one of those things where Bristleback's ability to fight with the Halberd versus an SMY Ooh, cuts off these two heroes. They're going to relocate. Oh, he grabs it. He gets it. Aegis is up. Febby actually relocating in. I would like to see him go for the kill, but he's, he's trapped on the cliff. Another good vacuum, but Jo. Jo also trapped on the back. cliff. He's gonna get sent back. He's Complete fine. air ball on the Sonic Wave too. This is just an all over the place. Oh, the fire. Now we're talking. Sven steps in and delivers a big, big swipe. Takes out Chen. All right. In Rave's defense, this is the strongest that Sven's ever going to be, more or less. He's going to get a Moon Shard. He might swap his Mask of Madness out for something, but very unlikely. I, I would actually like to see a double Moon Shard. Do you think that would be good? I was about to say, Moon Shard is what? How much attack speed? 120. That's Mask of Madness is... I think it's 120, at least. How does uh, Moon yes, Shard compare to... And Mask of Madness, when you activate it, is 100. 100? So yeah, absolutely. It's I mean, that's more, a, plus get the Moon Shard. I, and you don't take extra damage. And you don't, you're you losing the movement speed, but you've got a Wisp, so I think it's okay. That's pretty much the strongest Sven's going to be, is about here. Whereas Bristle could still pick up two items, potentially. Chrissy as well, but he's still very vulnerable to the Sven. Does Chrissy have a Shiva's anything like that? He's, he's spent on buyback. He's going Hex instead. This Axe pickup has just not really cut yeah, out. I think that's the one thing where... Rave were in the lead, and Chrissy's like got 5k gold. At that point, you need either a Hex or a Shivers, and he picks up this Ags. To me, Ags is more an item you get as your first item, maybe a second item, but getting it as late as he did, 
has not worked out. You know, I, th I think if MVP was more magic damage based, I think an X is okay because it scales okay against nukes. It's like two nukes, three nukes maybe that it blocks, but it doesn't, yep. it's half of a hit. It's one hit for Sven. It's not the survivability it gave you in combination with the damage. It wasn't the right balance against physical damage. I think if it was more magic heavy, it would have been an okay pickup, but it just looks terrible against the physical DPS oh, that AC. MVP has. Um, that's that's it's, it's safer. It's still good. <laughs> it's it basically makes bristle much weaker. It makes you stronger against bristle. You've got the minus armor of the desolator to stack with it. Um, he can always get a moonshot on top of it and still have equivalent attack speed as the mask of Manus gave him. Yep. So it's definitely the the safer build for it's it's a better mix. It's of also changes. something that maybe these players haven't even theory crafted like that moonshot actually as a like as an item that you want to slot in could work out because yeah. it's such a new item. Players it's, maybe just aren't considering it. It's rarely purchased for sure. Um, he'll obviously buy it if he has a stupid amount of gold, because yep. um, you can eat it for the 60 attack speed. But you know, with tether and AC, I think he's going to be just happy with the amount of attack speed he has, at least until he sells his treads. We'll see Dax here now. He's got 1500 gold. Picked up a BKB, and since the BKB purchase on the radiant side, Oshaker has not found an Echo Slam to match that one he got at the bottom tier two tower. Yeah, I like the BKB purchase on Darkseer here. I think this is what they needed. Three total Templar Assassin. Febby's building one maybe with an Ogre Club. Hags is up on Witch Doctor, by the way. So we will be seeing more output from him. He's done a good job this game, I think. He's been getting some good ults off despite his uh, low farm. Uh, Disruptor, nothing really. Just a point booster on her. I, or, I, or him, sorry. I kind of wish he just went Ghost instead, though. He's behind, I agree. you know, it's 4,000 gold. It's not going to keep you alive against a TA, really. It's a different scene. Maybe one hit. Whereas the Ghost Sepper can buy you at least four to eight seconds, somewhere in there. I think, but in the same vein, if he does finish the Ags, it could win them team fights. Just if he does cast it on the right people. Casting, casting on Sven, for example, just wins you a fight because then his damage is a third or something. Well, that previous fight just below the like, left of the Roche Pit earlier, like they hit, they led with the Fissure if there was no follow-up Sun, but they had the Static Storm. If that was yeah, follow Fissure exactly. into Static Storm, Sven can't BKB. Well, Rave now, they're just forcing the defending the high ground. They haven't really got any other options here but w apart from waiting for MVP to come from them. Or unless they want to go for like some crazy ambitious smoke gank, but... Feels like fighting into the the Sven TA docks here at this point is just a, a long shot. Chris, he's doing his best to split push. Oh, Kurt isn't going to get hit. This is so important. It's going to get grabbed. That's a hex. No hex now for Chrissy. At least not for three minutes. Should we maybe save the surge for the... Yeah. Maybe they... To get out to the secret shop, I believe. Maybe they search in yeah. and then said, oh, we're fine. We can just juke now. It's a really good search now. Uh, but it's definitely important to save. Having wards at the secret shop in late games actually... It is, yeah. Surprisingly good for that very reason, because teams have to get out there to buy so many of the big late game items. Ooh, that's going to be a Dark Sir TP, so... No threat to the Quap Dine, who's going to shift in the jungle and farm there. This at least gives them some gold advantage for now. But by losing the Hex, it makes it a bit harder. That was a relocate, actually. He relocated back there to defend, and Dark Sir TP, to, and then pushed it out a little bit, and then Let's got see. relocated back in. Well, this may trick them into thinking that they're committed, or that they're spread out. Um, when really they still have five. Yep. So they can maybe can get a kill or start the team fight on Rafe here. They're still playing very safe, I guess. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of just the level one relocate from Wisp. Yeah. Because this is very much a Febby thing. He, he doesn't to like putting up. many skill points into his ultimates. And uh, historically, he would do it on Weaver. There's a game that people made a lot of fun of him for. I feel like he needed more time lapse. He would do it on Weaver. He would do it on uh, Gyrocopter. Uh, he just really doesn't like getting multiple points in his. I, I think it's uh, a mistake in his play, honestly, because yes. it's 10 seconds, 10 seconds, plus the, the cast time is a lot lower. They glimpse back UO here. It's 15 seconds of each. It goes down to a minute. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Okay, Fina using BKB. I guess he's going to hit buildings, but he does get Basher. This is looking a little bit so bad. And then that as well. as well. He's in trouble. No more BKB here. Fizzer comes through. Quap ulti on two. Febby's low. He's, he's, he's silenced up with a cheese. Completely heals them all up. And now the Witch Doctor only doing damage. Two dead heroes on Raid. And in the back line, QO picking up the Quap kill. And I think this is it. MVP Phoenix is just going to win it. The Sven pick completely paying off. What a nice Quap counter. It was good against the other supports as well. They just, they got blown up in three hits. Their team fights around Doxia Sven was just crazy good. And 
We'll talk about Febby's build, but to me, he was maybe even like the MVP of this game. He had some really clutch plays at various times, keeping heroes alive. I and mean, this was just a, a great, great game all around from MVP, though. Yeah, they, I mean, they had a couple early fights that went well, but I think this was a slight uncharacteristic.